All right, before we wrap up, let's talk about some load testing tips and best practices. If you use the unique data source configuration, you will get multiple agents, each with a unique set of data. So that's something important to know. You can also add analysis comments to your load test results, either while the test is running or when it's done. So that can be handy if you want to be able to make notes about what the configuration was that you were using at that time. Another benefit of installing virtual user packs is that it, in addition to un unlocking an unlimited number of virtual users, it also unlocks your dev machine's CPU cores. By default, you're only going to be able to use one of your cores for your test agent. Once you install one of these virtual user packs, you'll be able to use all of them. So that can greatly increase how many users you'll be able to sustain on your dev machine. It's a good idea for you to run the agents in 64-bit mode. I showed you that under the test settings. It's also worthwhile to know where those counter sets are if you ever need to add a particular counter to the thresholds for warnings or critical. Uh, you can do that in the path shown here. It's a pretty straightforward XML file. You can simply go in and change the threshold rule for an individual counter and specify whether or not it, it has a threshold and what that threshold should be. Also, you can change which counters show up by default. So if you're like me and you always need that SQL Server counter and you just like it to be there the first time and you don't have to go adding it yourself, you can do that by just adding a default counter element to that same counter XML file that I just showed you. If you're going to be running some tests that run for a long time, like overnight or all weekend, you're going to want to probably crank down how frequently you're sampling the performance counters. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a huge amount of data and it can slow things down or just choke up your SQL database. Here's some recommendations. If you're going for over 24 hours, you're probably okay to just do once per minute or, or basically every 60 seconds. Uh, anything under an hour, you're probably fine with the defaults of, of five seconds. When you do the CSV encoding for a data bound test, the, by default Visual Studio saves these with a two byte header. You might have seen this when I was showing you how to do web testing. So I thought I'd point out a little tip here. If you go and uh, save these with an advanced setting and do save as, you can go and get rid of these garbage characters that you see here. And the way you do that is say save with encoding and then choose the encoding of US ASCII. Once you do that, then your data bound test will be able to use a CSV file without those two little garbage characters in the front. As you saw, they don't really cause any problems, but if you use the right encoding, you won't have to deal with those characters. Some final notes. Just in terms of how the controller works, it batches things up by hundreds. So if you did have a finite number of tests you wanted to run, let's say 250, and you had three agents, realize that it's not going to divide them evenly. It's going to send 100 to the first two agents. The last one's only going to run 50 of the tests. And then it's also worth compiling your actual test project using the NECPU configuration. There's no benefit to using the 64-bit config, so you'll be able to run it on more varieties of test agent machines, including ones that are running on 32-bit processors, if you use the NECPU config.